getting into it. So the group of you have uh, completed your work uh, for the Iron Fang, Order of the Iron Fang Monastery, pardon me, uh, and made your way back across the plains north of the Pinwood, investigating Willem's shadowy stronghold. You found he was unwelcome, along with the rest of you. Uh, barely making it out with your lives intact. Uh, and forestalling a very grim eternal punishment of a future, uh, you survived. You continue to push across the plains towards Elderthorn, eager to spend some of the coin now weighing down your pockets, and came across a burnt-out campsite, uh, seemingly the site of some vicious... Uh, attack by a marauding band of who knows what's gnolls, goblins, orcs that uh, care less for the trappings of society. No one's quite sure. Um, but there was a temporary survivor. Sit lone individual had a uh, pierced multiple had been pierced multiple times by arrows and partially scorched, but was clinging to life. As you attempted to render magical aid, his wounds refused to close. They were envenomed in some way to prevent such magical restoration from taking place. Helplessly, you watched as the individual expired. Not as after begging for help and praying to whatever powers he believed in. Seeking about, looking about, you found a small chest that was intact and seemingly warded magically against damage, including the flames that had consumed the tent around it. And you found a holy symbol uh, upon the necks of each of the individuals, uh, the three burned corpses and the one whose expiration you witnessed. The holy symbols had a familiar icon to slightly overlaid circles in a vertical fashion and the chest contained something very familiar two chunks of green crystal each weighing about a little bit more than a pound you realized at this point that these individuals were likely not innocent travelers but maybe members who had looted the uh mines that you had found not too far from here, or had escaped from the area prior to your incursion into it. These were, in lack of better terms, cultists. Probably evil. Maybe. Needlessly, the... Uh, regardlessly, pardon me. The group of you set off. Eventually made your way to Elderthorn safely. No other tarrying along the way. And set about making some good use of coin. You purchased a number of new artifacts and items for the group of you to utilize in your fights and travels. And Dunning has requisitioned a an upgrade to his uh, chain chainmail that he wears currently to have uh, metal splints applied to it, um, such that it might provide a little bit better protection um, at the cost of now no longer being concealable underneath uh, garments. Seems like a reasonable change, or partially concealable the chain does hang long. The group of you have about a day, a uh, day and a half to, to two days still in Elderthorn to tarry uh, while Dunnan's uh, gear is being completed. Is there anything the group of you would like to accomplish during this time? Um, Siegfried would like to go visit his parents. Okay. Anyone accompanying Siegfried? Uh, I mean, I can go by myself if other people are yeah. staying in town. Alright, so take take some time to uh, 
visit the family. Uh, they are a, a brisk daily walk out of town, but uh, able to be done enough that you could travel, rest, uh, visit, rest, and then you wouldn't need to set off until mid morning the following day to be back in time. So easily enough. Yeah. Okay. So you're doing that, Hella Rest. Anything in particular that you're accomplishing? Good to move on. You're muted, uh, Kim, if you're talking. Oh, sorry. No, not going to do anything. Okay. I saw you no. are checking. No, not going to Sigfried's tap mom's. Not going to Sigfried's mom so she doesn't have to try to feed me, too, if she's okay. like, doing it. I just, no, no inconvenience for her. Okay. Noted. Uh, Dunnan, anything else in particular? Besides just wearing well, armor. Mm, if we could rewind a little bit, mm-hmm. or I know we can all, we can also play it. Um, then I forgot to ask about the hammer that uh, the Amber Braids somehow acquired, and he just wanted to know from uh, what's his name, Andre, how did they get a hold of that hammer? Oh, the hammerhead that you've that uh, you've. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you can remember and go back about an hour and a half after you've requisitioned your armor. Um, very embarrassingly. <laughs> um, but, uh, when you uh, get to the Amber Braids, uh, Andre looks up. Change your mind already. Really, Andre, I was just... We were uh, at the, what, the establishment and... We talked to Kelpip and I found this hammerhead, this weird looking thing. And he mentioned um, you had acquired it, but couldn't get, I don't know, didn't know what to do with it. it but bad. somehow I, I feel it's special. I, I just wanted to know what's the history behind it. How did you acquire it? I don't know what the history was. Um, it came in a shipment from Armskek, a bunch of scrap that was supposed to be melted down. Um, Tools that break over time, uh, things like that, uh, better off as raw materials, but you don't leave them uh, and let them lie. You might as well reuse the metal for something else. So it came in um, like two big barrels, uh, random crap, um, and mm-hmm. after we had melted everything down, uh, like everything seemed fine, we poured out the uh, slag. Um, and now the raw iron into uh, ingot molds, and that was in the bottom of the kill, the um, traceable, uh, like un- untouched, um, unfazed, unfazed. Uh, so couldn't melt mm. down. So figured Kelpip might want it. Mm. it they sold it me for a protection on it. Yeah. So might as well give it to him. That was it though. Mm. No handle. It just came like Could that. You- could you make a handle for it? Would that be possible? My, I might have use for it. Something tells me it's it's special. Yeah, handle's not. I haven't. Hard to make. Hmm? Um. I uh. Uh, give give me a day or so. Leave it with me. Sure. Let me find. And I'll give him the hammerhead. I'll make it uh, one-handed if you could. I prefer the shield in the other hand. All right. Great. Uh, Thanks as always, Entry. He sort of just waves you off absentmindedly, like, yeah, yeah. Um. I'll pay you later when I pick up my armor. Just tell me how much it runs then. <laughs> Um, uh, Siegfried, so you head to your parents. Um, upon your arrival, you're greeted by, uh, the smell of some type of bread. You're not quite sure what, um, but it smells lovely as you walk into your home and you see, uh, your mother currently working. Uh, your father is 
uh, straightening up the place. And uh, you don't see uh, the, the little one running about anywhere at the moment. Yeah, I, I go uh, knock on the door. Uh, I mean, I'm already in. I'm like, ah, it's nice to see you both. Where, what's Orla up to? Oh, welcome home, dear. Uh, this is a nice surprise. Um, I have uh, some spring uh, zucchini bread. Uh, it'll be ready in a little while. Um, I think we have enough to sh uh, for you also. Uh, I don't know. Uh, she was collecting bugs earlier, so she's been wandering around outside. Serious business, I see. Probably. Oh. Well, how, how have you both been? It's it's nice to see you. We uh, we went on quite a bit of a trek towards Ar Armskirk and uh, we're back for a few days. Uh, Yuri sort of uh, looks over at you. Up to Armskirk? That's a bit of a hike. How was it? Good. I mean, um,. We uh, met an orc tribe out in the, the plains. They were having some trouble. We were able to help them. And uh, yeah, we found out some information that would help Eldrithorn. Regarding that, I'm sorry. I can't, I, I can't speak much about that. But... Ah, fine. Secret of business. I mean, uh, the... boy. Captain Storm Surge would, would skin me if I told you some of the stuff. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, he'd be able to skin you and cover three canoes. Look at you. I know, exactly. That's what he'd do. And I, I think I'm, I somehow grew taller. I, I can't even tell. Um, but yeah. Uh, I think we were really able to help Elderthorn this time. At least in a little bit. That kelp up is Does it have to do with fun. that uh, water thing that you sort of mentioned to us? Yes, yes. You... You've been avoiding the wells, haven't you? As best Those as ones. we can. I mean, it's not like we have a spring on our property. Uh, I'm, I'm working on that. I'm working on that. Uh, I might be able to help you with that someday. But yes, um, Kalpip thinks he may have found a way to help the town with, the in with what we were able to bring him. Yeah. But, so um... Not a duck. I never see him yeah. about... Yeah, I mean, well, I understand why the his shop is has unbelievable security. Um, I couldn't tell you. I've, I've been there all of, I think, three times in my career. All, always company business, but... Yeah, uh, he didn't have... He's been helping us quite a bit, so... Um, but, uh... I wanted to ask you something, Mom. Um... We had an interesting run-in with the Kami. I just wanted to talk to you about it in case you had any insight. Yes? Um, what was your run-in? Uh, They're always I, watching. I I, uh, I don't remember the exact details because I was gone for half of it, but I will mention to her the, that clearing we found with the... <laughs> The, the woodcutters that had been captured by the weird mutated forest monster, and it seemed like the, the Kame were being pushed oh, right. closer. It, it seemed like they are being pushed closer to the farmers. That's and, terrible. Yeah. I think something's going on. I mean, obviously something's going on deep I mean, in the forest. So, I've never heard of anything like that. Um, like, history has taught us that if you are mean to the natural world, like the natural world's gonna sort of be mean back. They'll get you however they can. I guess. Um, I turn to Yuri. Uh, do you know if any log cutters were attacked by Kami like this? I mean, no, I've never heard of anything like it. As far as I do, these biggest these problem we ever is a bear every now and then, and that's dealt with ha pretty handily when it does happen. Can't let them get a taste for flesh. And and Spencer, as far as Siegfried recalls, those mm -hmm. workers were just clearing area for land, right? They were they were like clearing what was previously farmland before it was okay. encroached upon. Yeah. yeah. 
So it's not so, like yeah, they were even claiming additional land. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I mentioned that to my mom. I mean, mm -hmm. they weren't even in the forest. They were reclaiming some farmland that had gone overgrown. It's the first time I've heard Kami doing anything on farmed land. Did they had they done anything to the different Kami beforehand to warrant such repercussions? I'm not sure. Like, I... like the. I mean, we speak of the, the Kami like it's a single thing, but there's thousands of them. Probably more. Um, from yeah, like each tree probably has its its own little guardian. Um, every tuft of grass, rocks, whatnot. So, I, but I, I, th I they tend to be pretty close in their approximations of justice if you would call it yeah i mean we we tracked down the the workers and we found this clearing in the woods it was obviously suffused with primal magic and someplace sacred to the kami i i laid down my weapons and i tried to negotiate with whatever spirit was there but it attacked us immediately and it was like no kami i've ever seen something clearly got to them Based on what you said, I don't know, anything that can, uh, anger them that much, there must be a reason. I mean, they, I've never heard of them just doing something like that, you know? Um, yeah, I, I mean, usually you have to go poke them being, Yeah, pretty neutral. Yeah, exactly. You, you, when you stick your nose somewhere that it's not supposed to be, that's when it gets, uh, snapped. But... Maybe, I don't know, if someone has a problem with Nakame, you can give him some advice. I, I, don't, I don't really know. The, the farmer, those, the farmers and the hands, they, as far as I could tell, they were just regular people. I mean, they they didn't know much about the Kami, but they knew that you don't mess with the forest at the very least. Hmm. But I don't know. It's just, it's been at the back of my mind with all the other things going on. I'm sorry, I... I, I... Can I help you more, sweetie? Um, it's no. never been something that makes a lot of sense to me beyond just the idea you respect them, they respect you. Every now and then something mm -hmm. goes missing and something else might turn up. It's just how it is. Do you know someone I could talk to that has more information on the Kami? That, that is the information that we have on them. Okay. Um, I'm, 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 it's not like botany, where you can have a hundred, lots of pictures that people have drawn of different plants and whatnot. Wow. Um, people don't draw the breeze, right? They draw the yeah, effects that, of the breeze. That makes sense. Oh. I'll keep an eye out, and I will let you know if I find anything out as well. We deal with them just the same we deal with rain, or sunshine, or drought, or snow. It's part of the world, sweetie. Um, right. um uh, I have... If they're, if someone is angry like that, I don't want to get told that you got taken by this plant thingy at Okay. So you mean like immediately starts thinking about the shadow cave they were just in? <laughs> just like, uh, uh, not sure. Uh, yeah, funnily enough, I think you met Aeolus last time, right? Uh, yes. He, he seems nice to have a man. Seems to have a profound connection to the Kami. That's they, cool. That's they seem good. to like them. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, do you That's think nice there could be? <laughs> do you think there could be uh? Kami of Shadow? I don't see why not. Um, I mean, I guess that's also part of the natural world. Like, night and day. We found an interesting place that was suffused by Shadow. It was very dangerous. But it's something we need to investigate. She sort of gives you a stern look. Alright, you need to stop going to all of these 
very dangerous places. I mean, if I didn't, my, my crew would die pretty quickly. Alright. Well, be more judicious then. <laughs> I'll try. I'll try. And then, uh, he, he goes through his, his pack and then... Ooh. Oh, she goes and... Excuse me. I'm sorry, sweet. I, I need to get the bread out. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you. It, it smells delicious. Uh, I'll turn to Yuri then and I'll show the holy symbol that we found one of the the not the platinum one like one of the metal ones we just found i think uh Aeolus and... has the platinum one or he turned it in yeah um, yeah to... I, I just have one of the regular ones yeah mm -hmm. um i just show that to my father if if you meet anyone bearing this symbol be extremely wary of them mm, okay um there's there's evidence that through. They're... Yeah, there's evidence that they may have been working in the lumber camp. I'm I'm not sure, but you know how people pass in and out. But people wearing this symbol have been found and some it's found connected to some terrible things. Okay. So um, if you if you see anyone wearing them, just be careful. What is it? A good luck charm? Some kind of holy symbol? Yeah. I, I don't really understand. Uh, yeah. Not too many, uh, cling to those beliefs anymore. Yeah, but whoever believes in this symbol is connected to what's going on with the water. Okay. So just, just be careful. Sounds good. Sweetie! Yeah, I would... <laughs> sort of holds it up. Look at this, remember it. And he hands it back to you afterwards. Yeah. And I just asked him, do you guys need any help with chores or no, anything you do? He sits down in a chair made out of uh, looks to be like um, driftwood and storm falls. Uh, yeah. and it's sort of been tacked together and left somewhat raw. And it stretches out slightly. Ugh. We're good. Don't worry about it, son. Well, if it's alright, I think... Food. Yeah. If it's all right, I, I'm gonna spend the night and head back in the morning. But thank you for letting me stay. No worries, always. This is your home. Yeah. And I would just probably just sit somewhere quiet and practice my music until dinner was ready. Yeah. And th that's about it. Your conversation turns lighthearted after that. Oh. Um, Orla comes back in. And you spend some time playing with her. She shows you a particularly large beetle that she found and speared, um, nice. which is mostly squished, like not worth preserving in any way whatsoever. Um, I give I give Orla ten silver pieces. <laughs> Her eyes go wide, like you. He gave me money, and she gets all excited and runs around and I, for a while. Yeah, I also say, uh, uh, ask Yuri, kind of sly. Um, you haven't. You don't know where, where Gori Zura might be. Last last time I heard she was working in the logging camp. No. Eh, she sent me a letter. I think she wants to meet me. But it's, it's alright. Never mind. I'm just going to go back to playing with Orla. Okay. Uh, your time passes. Um, you enjoy the uh, heartening uh, vacation so to speak make your way back to elderthorn the following morning uh dunnan uh you are able to uh head back to the amber braids the next afternoon. could have done something in the evening yeah, at sure. Pukas. Yeah. well dunnan would have stayed um up front at the i don't know bar like mm -hmm. at the counter and then had like two ales and then is it buzzing in, in the evening are there many people um so it is uh it'd be three days before sorry four days before beginning of summer um it relatively is um most of the spring work has yeah. been accomplished by people at this point so they're now now doing things to spend their time so it's uh starts to get a little bit hopping before even before sundown <laughs> Okay. Well, Bannon would have had dinner and two to three years and would have then turned around uh, and face 
the the um the fitted kid in like the room mm-hmm. as I've shot it. Anybody up for a drinking game? Uh, make me a persuasion check and an intimidation check. Intimidation. Nice. Mm. So, what do you want first? Persuasion? Yeah. And then intimidation. Oh. Um, oddly enough... Uh, so you needed to roll higher on persuasion than intimidation for this. Um, so that Perfect. people weren't, uh, afraid of trying to do it. You got, uh, two takers. Um, uh, one person sort of comes back. You buying? Well, loser buys, right? And I'll put on, I don't know, what's, what's, do people usually have, like, five silver? Or is it, like, a lot of money? Maybe 10 silver to start. Okay. I'll say I'll bet 10 silver I drink both of you to the ground. And winner is taker. I even buy the drinks for you if you know, I want to. Hey, uh, one individual pulls out uh, uh, 7 silver and 30 copper. Uh, the other one pulls out 9 silver, 10 copper. Um, I put down the 10 silver. I don't care. And then pile it up on the table. Um, Just your fancies. Uh, the uh, individual currently performing in the Faded Gate uh, strikes up so at, as they see this going on. People have started to crowd around now. Strikes up a, a jaunty tune as they go. Um, and the two individuals, uh, roll me two percentile checks, please. Mm-hmm. Individually or just together? Uh, doesn't matter. Okay. Wow. Two and 76. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. so the first one is a uh, younger farmhand. He's probably maybe 20 ish. Um, he looks like he might be. <laughs> in the midst of his Blackburn training as well. I'm not quite sure. Um, based on what he's wearing at the moment, he's wearing uh, farm garb. Um, uh, the other one is an older fellow. Uh, looks to be maybe maybe his, his grandfather w- or grandmother was a half-elf. Mm. It's just a very faint point about his ears. Like, not one of his parents, for sure. Um far back most likely um and uh they sit down and the first round is brought uh three big wooden stones before, before we start um Dunan would take out the chalice of sobriety <laughs> and would turn to them i'm sorry when uh, at drinking games i rather have my own cup i a little bit peculiar about that is it all right with you Make a persuasion. I make a deception check, actually, because <laughs> you're op- intentionally obfuscating a reason. Like, uh, you want this for an advantage. Uh, if you lose, we get that too. The winner gets that. You throw it in the pot. Mm, that seems a little bit unreasonable. But yeah, only if I special, lose. Special thing, cause you're so fancy. Oh, all right, all right. I don't want to be known as a dwarf who doesn't keep his word. So all right, but only if I lose, and I'll drink out of that chalice, right? Yeah. Um, all right. All right. Um. Let's start then. And so he rubs his hands together. Luca comes over. Um. And pours the uh, wooden stein that's been brought to you into the chalice of sobriety, and uh, it's just about just shy of the top of the chalice. Uh, it holds the full stein. Oh. All right, it, it'll be the, the same volume. You're all good. Um, 
He's not getting any advantage if I fill it up. Actually, you might... I think it holds more than the Steins. Um, uh, she Perfect. sets everything down in front of everybody. Uh, the uh, bar that's currently playing is, uh, sort of plucks up this uh, sort of an anticipatory tune as you go. Um, and the contest begins. Um, over the course of the next ten minutes, uh, the older gentleman is sort of swaying after about the sixth drink um, <laughs> during this time, and his eyes are unfocused and glassy. Uh, the younger individual is holding his own, um, hmm? to be fair. Um, you had some training, huh? And he just sort of smiles at you as he reaches for the next sort of tankard. Um, and then sort of um, half gets up out of his seat to sort of like look you in the eyes. And then takes his free hand, the one that's not grabbing the tankard, and goes to sort of slam it down on the table like in an intimidating fashion. Misses the table entirely and tumbles <laughs> sideways. <laughs> Dumping oh, the tankard on himself as he goes down inadvertently. Well, guess that means I win. Mm -hmm. uh, no, yeah, I'm not. the older one mm -hmm. chimes in. Yes, He's still here. And... Have a good sleep, and I pat him on the back. Hmm. Don't you worry; it will be to over tomorrow. I uh, just sing along and be Draft jolly all night. To drink, he lasts another three drinks or so um but there's an unfair advantage going on here as he has no chance you can add a uh, 20 silver to your inventory um i won't do that so i'll take the money go over to Bukas, and lay down the table split it up between them tomorrow i had my fun for tonight that's more than the money that i could ever get it was great I'll split it up after I take their drinks out of it. Um, sure. She sort of gives you a look. Careful about well, doing that. Careful about uh, having these contests in my tavern. Sorry, I didn't get that. Careful about having these contests in my tavern. Uh, it's just a one-time thing. Don't worry. It's not becoming a regular thing or anything. I would just okay. feel bored. And I can't hold my own. It's not my fault if they challenge a dwarf, right? I mean, she sort of winks at you. Sure, you can. Give me an insight check. <laughs> insight. Mm, nope. Um. Nope. You know, it's fun and comfortable as you retire eventually uh and the group of you reconvene that the next afternoon i believe um for dunnan you to pick up your hammer um mm. when you go to pick up said hammer andre's looking at you i think we got ripped off what do you mean? So, yesterday, you dropped it off, I put it off, truth be told, I don't want to make a fucking handle, but whatever. So I took a, I took a handle out of one of the other warehammers we got, um, since that's what you did ask for, the length and whatnot. I tried other lengths too, um, I tried everything I could, mind you. Um, I went to fit it, I dropped in the pegs. To secure the wood um, through the eye of that, that hammerhead. Looks mm -hmm. good. The next time I pick, like I turn the way to put my tools back and pick it up to give it a test. And uh, the very first time that I swing it and hit anything, the wood shatters. Like this is fresh. You would have bought this these handles on Warhammers that we have currently. 
Like, it's good. It's uh, ash. It wouldn't have broken like that. I try it again. Something different. This one was oak. Same thing. I tried reinforced with sort of bands of iron um, up near the head, uh, where it was sort of breaking, wondering maybe it's just the weight of the thing. Um, still breaks inside the iron band. Mm. Telling me it's unusable? I don't know. Um, or might it be just a one part and there is a second part is the handle? I mean, a handle's a handle's a handle. Um, mm. But but every every handle you try to attach broke. Yeah, all the ones I tried a, a larger one. I mean, it's a little bit small for the head of a mole, but I wanted to give it a shot anyway. So I shaved down a mole handle and dropped that in. Mm. Dropped in circle eye hooks uh, to sort of flare out the wood, and same thing. Uh, first mm. hit. Which Give it try. His head goes tumbling. Have you asked Emil about that? Well, she's working on your armor. I didn't want to just step her and throw her away for hours on on end and delay you for getting mm. your stuff. But that's weird. That's I know it's special, but just the hammer head, right? That's mm. what it looks like. I mean, it didn't melt, so it's definitely more than just that. I don't know. He sort of plops it back in your hand. Uh, you owe us five silver for the shattered handles. Mm. Great. And I just get the hammer head with no handle. Alright. Sounds like a ripoff, but here you go. Thank you. And uh, how long for the splint mail? Tomorrow? Uh, uh, she should have it maybe before uh, around sundown. Mm, great. Maybe we can ask her later then about that hammerhead. I'll try ask Kelpip again if he can, I don't know, identify it. it I, I don't know what he tried. Zigfried Heller asked, yeah, either you fellows need, uh, any, either you need anything? No, um, I got, I got my armor. Um, that's about it. I, I'm not a big armor swords guy like Dunnan over here. Maybe, um, do you have any better shields? I have, a uh, a few. Um, it's all banded wood, but steel bands across it. Um, I can give, I can give you different shapes. Uh, if you spend a lot of time riding, I can give you a, a kite. Um, it's more comfortable to have on your back while riding, so you're not stabbing the horse's back. But. Sure, we we have, we have been doing a lot of riding recently, and I wouldn't want to hurt my horse, especially Biggin. Um, a new shield would be nice. That's what you named your horse. That's what Dunnan named my horse. No, no, it already was named Big Un. Not by me, but I do have to say, it could come from it. It's quite a nice name. I mean, yeah, it, it, is, it is a big horse, so it fits the horse. Well, uh, yeah, let me see what you got. Um, do you have a shield currently, Siegfried? Yeah, I do have, I do have a shield currently. Okay. So you, you can uh, trade that in for um, a uh, kite shield. Mm -hmm. Easily enough. Uh, mark off 10 silver because the one you're trading in is din dented and damaged over time. Yeah, definitely. But uh, it's taken a few you hits. have a kite shield, it's about two and a half feet in tall and about a foot and a half wide at the uh, girth, girthy point. Um, mm -hmm. but nice and comfortable. The... Thank you. Uh, masterful craftsmanship, as usual. Uh, I didn't make it. You don't need to flatter me. Um, <laughs> so the group of you complete your business here. Eventually pick up the splint for done and you can go ahead and add that to your sheet. Great. Uh, all right, or right, I can add it to for you if you want. Yeah, I forgot the way I can. So, 
click the little head or the little lock blue chain mail there we go and then in the little i button above chat type in splint find splint armor no oh, okay. and then it you can drag and drop that to your sheet and it'll get added automatically okay uh, I've, I've already done it for you um but now your ac is 19. awesome shield and splint great and i believe that means hella rest and you are both wearing splint now correct mm -hmm. mm, exciting all righty um, hey, you betcha I said yes. I agreed. Eventually, the next morning comes to you, and the group of you are able to set off. So where are you going? I think we are first heading to uh, uh, Madame Toad Tooth, and okay. then going to the head to her crypt after that. Okay. Mm. Roll me a d20. i see if anything happens along your travel to Madame Toad Tooth's. <laughs> okay. Um, Hellaras, how many um hours of language do you have at the moment? Forty-two. Forty-two. Okay. Been in town. It's now four forty-six. Uh, it's now the nineteenth of Kythorn. Um, uh, you may now add that as a language proficiency during the, your travel. Um to Madame Toad. Awesome. Uh, I'll add Aeolus's. Aeolus was learning Orc, right? Orcish, right? Yes. Correct. Alrighty. And you were learning Infernal. Uh, you've yes. now you've, uh, com uh, compiled the requisite hours. Um, okay. uh, there is a comfortable travel up to Madame Toad Tooth's. Uh, you know the way at this point, and uh, upon arrival, uh, her hovel that's set against the underside of this uh, sheer cliff goes up about 100 feet um, before continuing on into the mountain range behind her. Uh, in about two days time later is currently looks abandoned um, no lights on it's daytime no lanterns going there's also no smoke coming up through the uh, small chimney that sort of juts out and follows the side of the cliff um, she looks like she might it looks like she might be out at the moment yeah if if she's out um I might just leave a note under a door or something like that saying that we we were here. Um, we hope to speak to her when we come back from Mercury. Okay. Leave said note to Madame Toad Tooth and you, you head to the hench clearing? Yes, uh, I assume so. Yes. Right, one second, I'm adding into my notes that you're leaving a note for Toad Tooth. <laughs> Okay. Um, one by one, you approach and then walk through the veil that uh, occupies the center of this henge. Uh, I'll also I'll... just mention it, and then, um, you may want to ask the mayor about that hammer. If anyone knows something, he will. Uh, all of you, Mark the mayor. Ah, the ecrip. Yeah. Uh, mark your level of exhaustion uh, for using a henge. Um. As you step into the deserted, at one point, market square of Urcrypt, a sense of emptiness hangs in the air. The cab appears hauntingly quiet and devoid of life. One moment, please. Even more than usual? I've only been here once before, so I don't know what's usual. <laughs> but uh, can I do like a quick perception check to see if anything is obviously amiss around the the gate okay. um the uh pardon me uh rows of uh the hub appears hauntingly quiet and devoid of life where once were empty there are now rows of vacant stalls stand silently waiting for merchants to set up shop and display their wares 
behind you in the center of the square stand the six majestic henges, silent sentinels over the area. Their ancient stones hold the air of untapped potential, and yet they remain untouched and undisturbed. Directly behind you is the henge from whence the group of you have stepped. The familiar shimmering curtain of magical energy extends from the stones, swirling and undulating like a vibrant tapestry woven by unseen hands. Across the empty courtyard, you see the undulating and shimmering effect of another henge's gateway having become reinvigorated at some point since your last foray here. The absence of people amplifies the stillness, broken only by a gentle desert breeze that rustles through the surrounding area. The market that feels wasn't... suspended in time, frozen in anticipation of vibrant life that's yet to come. Among the quietude, one building stands out that was not in this state of repair previously, with a large sign, beautifully painted script, reading, The Moon Sands Caravansary. Its open doorways draped in what appears to be luxurious curtains and fabrics, which are currently pinned open, revealing a well-furnished interior that awaits the chatter of patrons and the clinking of glasses. So you gaze within, you see the atmosphere is empty, but brimming with potential, as if the walls themselves hold the echoes of laughter and lively conversation yet to be heard. As you stand in the market square, you can almost envision the vibrant tapestry of place, life that Yerl hopes will soon grace these stones. Urcrypt, the devoid of people for now, is a testament to dreams and aspirations of its mayor. And the promise of a future desert oasis. Siegfried would like, place. yeah. Siegfried mm. would like to go over and examine the newly opened gate. That, um, oh, wasn't, yeah. pa that wasn't powered on last time, no, right? No, uh, no, but I mainly want to see if the stone was put in on this side or the side it came from. Yeah. Um, so you recognize, uh, Siegfried, that uh, the each henge for it to be considered a gate away from where it currently is, it must have a stone powered on its own side as well. Um, so the, you do see a bow mall stone has been placed in the apex of this one as well. Okay. Like, like you won't see a veil without a bow mall stone. Okay, um, so there needs to be a stone on both sides? Yeah, to form the, the tunnel, so to speak, with that's open at both ends, you need a stone on both ends. Hmm. Uh, I just stated the dungeon That was your alley. issue when you first arrived in our crypt, was you got here because you activated it from one end, meaning you can go one direction. You yep, and then we got, we got stuck, yep. Yeah, but uh, Yarrow had the second stone, correct? Yeah, he, correct. Had, he, he gave you guys the second stone. Or you selected yeah. from this treasure. Yeah, we didn't ask if that was the only stone he had, but they needed <laughs> whoever did this needed two stones. Which is I mean it took us quite a bit to get two stones ourselves. Mm hmm Perhaps maybe we should investigate this before we open up another gate, but as um right, we have a stone that sort of stick out in the courtyard conversing adding a lot of sound to this area uh you yeah. see floating out through the curtains of the moon sands caravansary um Yerl, um he's dropped his usual garb and is wearing a what looks to be a leather apron um and is currently in the process of cleaning some mugs um hi how does a holder wear something welcome uh, you're back. So good to see you all. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's been uh, almost over a month at this point. It's so good. Oh my gosh. Have you seen? We had a visitor. They're not here anymore. Um, oh, speaking, the visitor wanted permission to utilize your hench too. Um, oh, come in, come in, come in. It's good to see you. 
Hold on, uh, hold on. Who was that visitor? They they came through one of the the ones there. Yeah, we can see. Um, they had uh another crystal to activate it and everything. It was quite entertaining. Mm. Um, they helped me furnish this place. As you look around, following him into the Moon Sands Caravansary, you're enveloped by an atmosphere that blends warmth, comfort, and the hint of adventure just sprinkled over the top. The interior is adorned with rich, earthy tones, creating a cozy and inviting ambience. The air carries a faint scent of sandalwood and spices, adding to sense the sense of exotic allure. The main hall we've entered is spacious. It's got a high ceiling supported by sturdy wooden beams that create the sense of openness. Soft lighting emanates from intricately designed lanterns casting a warm glow that dance about the walls. There is present, you're not sure from the source, the sound of soft music. A melodic tune played on a flute, a per per played on a lute, fills the air, creating a soothing background melody. Uh, to your left, a well-crafted wooden bar stretches along one side of the hall. The bar bar's polished surface gleams under warm lighting. No, we lost Spencer. Hmm? I can hear you. Yeah. I can hear him. Yeah, me too. Okay. Uh, Siegfried, refresh. There you go. Okay. Alright. Uh, the... Uh, the bar's polished surface gleams under the warm lighting, inviting patrons to take a seat and partake in their favorite drinks. Behind the bar, you see an array of bottles, jars, and barrels lining the shelves. Uh, in one corner, a small stage is set, where musicians and storytellers might perform. The walls are adorned with tapestries depicting scenes of grand adventures, uh, far off lands and legendary heroes, inspiring the imagination and sparking the desire for new tales to be woven. Tantali the tantalizing aroma of freshly prepared dishes wafts from the open kitchen area at the back of the hall. The crackling sounds of a well stoked fire and the clinking of cooking utensils in create an inviting symphony of culinary delights. Uh, as you explore the interior of the Moon Sands Caravansary, you can't help but feel a sense of camaraderie and anticipation. This is a place where tales are meant to be shared and friendships forged. The spirit of adventure lingers heavy in the air. Following the group of you is Yarrow, as you've entered the, pit, the place. I put this little place together uh, for any travelers that come through. I hope you like it. I followed your instructions. Lots of pillows. You said lots of pillows, so I added pillows. <laughs> it's great. It's marvelous. Uh, really. I... I'm speechless. You yeah, really did a fantastic job. It's very inviting and very comfortable. Thank you so great. much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, please uh, make yourselves comfortable. I will check on meals. Um, oh, great. Meals. It is. Natalie's a little nervous. She's th she's not as, as taken in by pillows and stuff. She's a little nervous about the person who wanted to come through our portal and the absence of Toad Tooth. So she wants to ask Yarrell, uh how long ago this person went through. Oh, um when you ask uh well uh that would be uh, about close to three ten day ago um maybe a uh, seven or eight days um after you had uh, left uh me with the instructions to start put shape making the place nicer and i wanted to be nice to anyone coming through so i dealt with all of the wandering corpses that were about town um they're dusty now they're part of the sands um but uh so dealt with them um the first day or so and then after that i spent some time shift shift, shift shifting some stones and cleaning up the space and then they came through and they were very kind um they smelled like salty 
it was very peculiar. Um, uh, dressed, I mean, they were dressed well enough for the desert, but uh, they were kind of exposed to the sun. Um, uh, they did have a stone in a pack to be able to get back to wherever they came from. Uh, they said they're from uh, the Isles. Uh, I believe the Storm Stirring Isles. Um, and they saw that the other hinge was activated. Um, and I wanted to... You weren't here. So I made a judgment call in the moment. Um, as you made me mayor of this space. Um, and I made the request um, that they not utilize your hench without permission from the people who had activated it. So um, they put in a request that the next time I speak with you, I ask your, for your permission for them to utilize it on, uh, for me to ask on their behalf. I can likewise ask them uh, if you can utilize theirs the, to keep things pleasant, you know, uh, for people moving through this space. Is it possible for you to arrange a meeting between us and this individual? I don't know when they're coming back. Uh, so we, I did some trade with them. They have a lot of supplies. It was very easy to purchase some of these things and trade for other things. Um, but uh, they brought me some of the pillows that you had requested, even Mr. Dunn. Mm. I, I just turned to Dunn and Helly, um... I'm not sure if we have the power to make a unilateral decision like this, but maybe... Well, I, we I informed the individual that the permission must be issued by the people who used, who activated the hench. Yes. That, 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 that was the most likely thing, that's, way that seemed fair, rather than ascribing that authority to another party. Meaning that they would be the ones need, um, that would need to grant you permission to use theirs. They I, seem to like that idea because then no one's going through theirs without their permission, no one's going through yours without your permission, but you can sort of trade permissions if you want. I, I, I agree, but um, I would like to maybe talk to the watch before we gave our permission. I, I don't know, what do you think, Heli, Donan? I think it's risky. We don't know them. I mean... Yeah. I, was, I don't I was, know you either. Too. Yeah, that's I, true. I but... don't know when they're going to be coming back through. You could hang out, but it could be a day, it could be a month. I know not. Did they ever come back since last time? Oh, several or... times, yes. Um, oh. over... I haven't seen them in five days or so. Um, and they were here. Um, they were dropping off actually the last of my shipment which was the enchanted knives. Uh, one moment, please. Let me check on your foods. As he sort of floats back towards the kitchen. I just, uh, maybe, maybe we should just hang out here till they come back. Kelly is definitely willing to just hang out if you guys want to do something else. Yeah, I mean, we haven't spent much time in our crypt anyway, so it might help. Just to... What, I mean, aside from figuring out the water, we don't have any other deadlines, correct? Not at the moment, and Kelpip, we bought some time with the water at least with Kelpip. Because we gave yeah. him a few stones. And do we know where these islands are? I'm um, again, yeah. yeah, Siegfried definitely does not know. Uh, okay. Didn't mean to roll that advantage. Uh, Hell of a rat's gonna drag you to a map. Don't sink. Okay. Nope. So you oh, okay. Well, you, know, uh, you know where the Stormstring Isles are. They're a good number of leagues off the main coast of Aquan. But we have done trade with them, and they're a known... It's not like they went someplace we've never heard of before. There's no known settlements in the Stormstring Isles. Oh, no known settlements. Okay. Okie doke. So yeah, why don't we just... We, we should rest at least a day to get rid of the exhaustion, but we'll, we'll see. Yeah. If we'll hang out around around uh, her crypt and see if that other person comes back. Uh, let's take our mid-session break here. Um, okay. Call it about 
five to eight minutes or so. And sure. we'll pick up with you guys um, chilling in Urcrypt and talking to Yarrow a little bit more after that. Okay, okay. sounds good. Alrighty.
I hear Hal Ress is Mike going. So I think Yeah, I'm here. Wonderful. All right. Um there we go. My audio is working now. All right, getting back into everything. Uh the group of you are greeted by a beautiful spread. There is a wide pan that is brought out just sort of floating and placed on the table. It takes up about 60% of the table, right in the center, uh, where the group of you are, uh, found a spot to sit on the uh, comfortable cushions around it. The center of this wide, flat pan is filled with this beautiful uh, orangey rice that just smells delightful and there's a, a bevy of different types of meats and uh, ingredients throughout it this is a massive paella um, and it smells delightful as your sort of beams please enjoy it it is a labor of well not to love it should taste magical um enjoy either way um, and he just sort of settles a little bit in his float, almost like he's si sitting down waiting to see if you like it. <laughs> yeah, the Siegfried digs it. I'm in dig scene. <laughs> the bottom of the rice is just crispy enough, but the top has some nice toothsomeness. Uh, the meats within are succulent, um, and just the right degree of juicy. Everything's seasoned to perfection, and there's a small hint of spice that leaves your tongue burning just slightly enough to warrant being thirsty um and Yero will provide uh glasses of what looks to be a chilled wine uh this deep ruby color uh for all of you to enjoy uh I, I, Gerard, I, you're, you're quite Helly, the host Helly, great Helly pounds like four plates or bowls full without even talking just grunting a little bit and like Winking and nodding at Yarrow, which is like, well, stop eating. She's just. I'm so glad. Um, the the acquisition of the knives was one of the big things that I wanted to make sure the caravansi would run, even if I wasn't able to hire cooks and whatnot. So. So, the person that came through is they are a cook or a merchant or. I don't. Tradesman. I, I think they are tradesmen. Um, they. Uh, they come across all sorts of objects and things uh, from what I've sort of been able to glean. But they were happy to do business with me. Um, as... They are always alone? Uh, sometimes, well, every now and then they would have some people come through with some crates uh, with things that I had requested. But those people didn't stay. They sort of went back through right away to where to uh, the, mm. the Stone Tring Isles. Um, uh, all of them I mean... dressed very... Plainly, uh, they seem to be sort of m muscly guys and gals. Uh, they didn't really do that much. Uh, not very talkative, wasn't. Mm. But it was nice to, to chat with him. Any any special garments so that we can recognize any special colors or insignia or anything so we could never saw any be insignia. Um, I saw a few different mm. ones on the crates. Um, I used some of the woods. From the crates uh in various bits uh he sort of looks around um not here one of the other buildings you can see it later when you finish um mm. but uh one some of the stuff i believe they acquired they they purchased from the opium depth mining company at some point um some of the wood and the timbers uh were in good repair um they're holding up my ceiling now um but mm. I, I think they do business with lots of different people. I mean, I think it could be great for Ella Son to do some more business with uh, a little far off um, towns, but That's I'm a little hesitant point. to, That's a great to point. give them permission. Like if they could trade through here, this could be sort of a trading hub or at least discussing yeah, well, of trade. Well. Yeah, we, we discussed, uh, we should meet them first, so I think we are going to stay here in, I don't know, two days or so. And we'll see, see if they show up and talk with them. 
good because You're I don't welcome think we to just... stay for a few days. I'm happy to. I have plenty of food. Um, now, if you don't, is there anything we could help you during the time? I mean, any labor or anything? I'm set up. Anything that needs to be purged out? I don't I... know any remnants. Nah, no. I dealt with most of it all myself. Um, and uh, it it wasn't too bad. Truthfully, it was. I mean, the things up top were sort of just a flavor for m my fun dungeon. Um, mm. Fungin? Fungin. Mm. But, uh, <laughs> no, uh, so you remember the, the, the knives that, that would attack you when you, you tried to cut the cake in the beginning? Oh, of the yes, and, yeah, so and the table. Of them and now they, and made, the they made your paella. Oh, I also um, got I also got the same things on forks and the cooking utensils and whatnot. It works beautifully. Uh, and I don't have to pay them. Uh, excuse me, Jarl. Um, has anyone from Elderthorn besides us been here? Oh, yes. Um, we I've met your um, uh, Captain Storm Surge. He's a lovely fellow. Um, he is? He, he's heartbroken, though. He, he's a he's poor guy. Um, uh, and then Madam Tom But wait, so could you elaborate on that? What yeah, do you mean he's heartbroken? heartbroken? Can you not see it in his face when you speak with him? He clearly has lost some love in his life. I don't know what. Um, don't know what. I look at Secret with a puzzled look. Storm Search? I, I just shrug. I mean, like, I, I love. Maybe it's possible. Oh, well. um, oh did you? Maybe he and Tidal were. In a romantic relationship? I wouldn't assume. I, I don't know. And then... Uh, Mayor so, Tidal. Uh, oh, and, and Matron Toadtooth came through too. She visits every now and then. She is quite was she good. here like a uh, couple of hours, uh, days ago? Because she wasn't in her hut and we were looking around. So she must be out. Did she come here recently? She was here recently. Um seven, eight days ago. Uh, mm. Very, very is, nice to speak with her. It's is she still is, getting to speak with her. Um, is, is she still on this side or did she already went back? Go back? I believe she left already. Um, I haven't seen mm. her yeah. in six days. So I assume she left. Uh, as long as she didn't like sort of crawl into one of the other buildings that I've constructed and then died and I haven't found her yet. She's left. Mm. I think she's quite capable of taking care of herself. Six days. So if mm. she is still here, she may be starving. Did um did Captain Storm Surge and uh, Madame Toadtooth see the other open gate? They Did have. They yes. Uh, I asked okay. them uh, if uh, they could uh, give permission, um, and they said that. Uh, it needed to be passed along to you based on the rules that I set, uh, but they weren't sure when they were going to see you, um, and then they weren't sure if they saw you, if they were going to get back, so I said, all right, well, I'll talk to them when they get back, and I, they're like, okay, yeah, that's okay. Well, uh, so, Storm's okay. Storm's at the very least, so that, that's a little relieving. Mm. So he gave us uh, the decision to yeah. give permission. I think mm. he recognized the fact I set the rule that this was the people who opened the gates, and they, he knew no, mm, it wasn't mm. the person who opened the gates type of thing. No, um, it's, it's just reassuring to know that Storm Search uh, gave us the permission to... It yeah. was very bracing for me for him to respect the fact that I had set the authority here, and he was respecting that authority. Mm. I mean, Storm Surge follows the letter of the law, so it helps to have... Good laws, he, I guess. He is a far worse conversationalist than Toto, though. He does not have yep. many stories, and most of his stories involve bloodshed. Yeah, that's, mm. that's how it is, but... Mm. Toto has wonderful stories. Uh, picking... Um, well, she, she's quite them, older than Storm Surge. She them uh, papayas. I've never seen the papayas. Uh, but <laughs> she said she found papayas at one point in her life, and she was telling me about the papayas, and they sound oh. delicious. Yarl, um, hmm. I, I take out my map. Um, we found a new biome. Um, uh, we 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 are hunting a, a yeti, unfortunately. But in their lair, we found a tunnel that seemed to go under the mountain, 
and it brought us out to a entirely new area we've never seen before. It was tropical and hot and humid, and I, I point out on the map where, where we went into the tunnel. Do you, do you know about, about this place? Uh, he looks at the map that you have, uh, which includes the storm string, uh, pardon me, not the storm string, uh, the cloud spine mountains, and the rain, and that range that travels north to south. And then some sketches on the far side of the mountain that look to be sort of replicated of what is on the eastern side, which is plains and then eventually sand dunes. Um, just sort of distinguishing the biomes. It's like, oh, no, this is all the rub. Um, as he sort of uh, use, he uses his telekinesis to pick up one of your utensils and just sort of point and gesture at this small location on the map. Um, so all of this is jungle here. Um, many, many leagues. Uh, haven't been there years. I don't know how long. Um, so yeah, he, it's he, not, he, none of that is desert. Oh. Very humid, unpleasant. Gets you sticky. Would you happen <laughs> to have a, a, a more accurate map? At no, LP I have no need for maps. That, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> I I know where you will be able to get a map though. In okay. hopefully a few months' oh. time. The stall on the end, I have the idea of making it for uh cartographers. So you can buy maps of the different areas that the hinges will lead to once we get more of them going. That seems very I also useful. need to find someone who will sell maps. I'm sure they'll come. If Everyone you build follows, it, right? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> we, we can call it the, mm -hmm. the, the what is it? The map maker of dreams, something like that. Ooh, I like it. <laughs> the dreamy map maker. Well, it's just interesting. We, we, we. As far as we know, our, our people didn't know there was a jungle there. We only oh. thought of it as desert. You've not been to these jungles. No, um, we took a step foot in it, and uh, it seemed very dangerous. So, and we had just and the humidity that. was just too high. We, we can't just came to... from the mountain with mountain gear and snow, and it was just too hot and humid there. Right. We were like sweating like crazy. I know what you mean. It's the worst. Um, oh, excuse oh. me. As he sees that you guys have just about finished up this massive, like, two foot diameter paella, um, and floats the tray back. Uh, let me get you dessert. Oh boy, there is more. Oh boy, even I can't take more. I love savory love sweets. Uh, it's very. Uh, <laughs> out comes a a tray of ice. In the middle of this desert, uh, this tray of ice, um, it's uh, cut in sheets, um, about like three inches wide and like eight inches long. Um, like these long rectangles and sort of layered a little bit on top of each other so the bottom is just ice instead of it's not cubes or anything like that um, and then placed upon the ice is um, slices of fruit um, and uh, on one edge of the tr this large tray is a trough and this trough has what appears to be a some type of sweet cream as he places it um, with his telekinetic ability places it down on the table please enjoy um these are fresh and they've been kept cold since they've arrived these are from the traders as well yes these are from the storm string isles um i believe that one is called uh mango uh that is a banana um quite good um a interesting, banana interesting texture um and uh, he goes through a variety of fruits uh mostly melon m melons and melon types of melons um but it's if you partake it is delicious um let's say you were saying though i did not mean to interrupt you i just wanted to get to visit no i was just asking um the the last time you were in that jungly area was there anything of note i know it must oh, have been a long time i mean there was things being overgrown um i was looking for a, a nice place like this to make home um that i might find people and 
I, I didn't find anyone here, but the ruins weren't going to be overgrown by the jungle after a few decades. Um, and I did find some ruins in the jungle, but they were... One was inhabited, they didn't want to mess with that. They, they seemed comfortable together and that was it. So I was like, I'll find my own. Um, I found my own and it, it was just being overtaken. I didn't want the constant fight of dealing with vines and bees growing in the middle of where I was living and whatnot. So I moved on from there. Uh, but that was, I don't know, 100, 150 years ago, maybe. Um, mm. The place with inhabitants, the inhabitants are like us or were mm. they a different type they of were creature? They taller than you. Um, walked on two legs. It wasn't like... Taller a, than even the secret? Like, it wasn't like a big animal, but I didn't mm. talk to them. But they're, they're generally humanoid looking, at least. Yeah. I mean, okay. most people who are humanoid, the first time they see me, they go, ah, and they run away or they try to shoot me and then I have to kill them. I mean, we probably would have done that if we hadn't gone through the fungin first, so that might have been a good idea. The fungin is a good idea. I'll make new fungin. <laughs> I would like to try that out again. It was quite funny. I mean, if you make a kid-friendly one, I'm sure the money would come in. Kid-friendly fungin. <laughs> I mean, parents always need someone need a break from their kids just to run wild sort of a little bit. His lips. Hmm. <laughs> just to give you a definition of kid friendly, nothing gets hurt or killed. That's, That's no fun. And only having fun. Well, yeah. for the kids, it is, yes. What if the kids want to hurt themselves or hurt each other? Uh, generally, well... you want to break it up, but I mean, most of the time they can figure it out themselves, but. You, you, you're preparing them for the future. Exactly. Would they have to fight to the death? Yeah. <laughs> no, no fights to the death. No fight to the death. <laughs> I mean, maybe unless you're from Willem's family, but we, we, I don't like to ask questions about Willem's family. No fight. <laughs> I would think on it. Um. But yep. Yeah, so the individual who came through, he was, he was very courteous. Um. Got me lots of things. Uh, but uh, do you... If you'd like, I can say that he, he only has permission to go, to use your hinge if you have permission to use his. And then the next time I see you, I can let let you know as such as well. So that way, it's, it's sort of a trade. Like, you get, you get it and he gets, you know? It's a question. We don't know his their atten intentions, so we just give, can't give them permission. Then they just go it's into our insane. home yeah. and raid it and maraud the farms. That's you know, you never I, know the true intentions my, of somebody. I wouldn't want my my little slice of the desert to be used for that either. This oasis hmm. should not be for conquest. I mean... As Tell you what, uh, Yarel. Uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, as as long as you can guarantee yeah. that they're not going. You to will, work. you will be the gatekeeper of these uh, uh, doors or uh, tradeways, then, correct? That is my intention. Yes, but it, it, so, presumably, if we get more than activated, it'd be great. So, if they do something we do not like, you can always revoke their. Uh, their permission to use the gate or the hinge, right? So, permission is granted on the condition that they are peaceable about it. Correct. Yes, I, think they, I think they would acquiesce to the same idea. And mm -hmm. uh, we also offer the same. We, we will not be bringing war. You're not war against. Yeah. Yeah. You're Perfect. not. I, I will remember and, and pass it along. I, I suspect they will agree, but I want them to agree before I allow you to go through, you understand. Um, yeah. And now, one one more thing, Yarl. There's there's one condition that yeah. needs to be, be held above. Yeah. And I, um, I show him, if anyone comes through with green glowing stone, they're not to be allowed through the gate to Elderthorn. No Absolutely. green glowing stone to Elderthorn. Got it. You show him the insignia. 
Uh, we, yeah, we I, I show them. And I say, anyone holding this symbol... Or the bearing be, this mark, yeah. ...should not be allowed through the gate. That is an old mark. I've never, haven't seen that in a long time. Why is anyone you, holding that mark? You've seen it before. Yeah, that is the symbol of oblivion. Can, oblivion? Can you tell us more? It's symbol of oblivion. It, a space like ours. Um, you know when you're in a town, um, and you are in the street, right? Okay. Now imagine, and you go into a building. So you're in the first building. So you stay in the caravansary. Now imagine you walk out of that building, and instead of entering the street, you just very briefly pass through the barrier that is the street into another building, and that is the inn. Um, and you pass in from that in through this very small thin barrier um, from the inn to uh, the merchant goods store. Um, all of these are the areas. The oblivion is one of them. Um, no one goes to oblivion, or at least no one comes back. I, I can't follow. It's too so, so like you high for me. In so you're in saying it's, it's it's a space between spaces? No, no, no. It it is another space. Um, like when you die, you go from here to somewhere else. That is when space. You have here yeah. as a space, and oblivion is another space. But no one goes to oblivion. Why would someone worship that then? I don't do you know. get power? Do you I... get power from Oblivion? I've heard of people stealing power from Oblivion, but I don't think that's a good idea. I mean, the more you Have look you ever... into Oblivion, the more Oblivion would look into you, right? I mean, that makes sense. So, how would somebody get to Oblivion? Why would you want to? Because go to obviously, you don't want well, to go to somebody... Oblivion. You don't want to come back from Oblivion. It, it, in the name, it doesn't sound great. But we're, we're, we're... it's just weird. Yeah, just uh, Yarel. Um, we're we're mostly asking because people wielding this symbol have caused great harm to Elderthorn. They've been they've been well... poisoning our drinking water. Oh my! And summoning some weird crab creature. It took uh, me what was the name? Hours to find water down below. It was hard. I understand the water thing. Yes, and if, no, if it was to... aspect of what was it called? Help me out. Aspect of Evoclest? Oh, Ever no. heard that, no one? Never hmm. heard of it. Um, yeah, the the whole power from the oblivion thing that seems like a bad proposition. Because I mean. Oblivion it is, is worrying for a, us. A big thing, and you like, in, I mean, the idea is not everyone is inconsequential to oblivion, right? Um, so if you're an ant and you steal like grains of rice from a picnic, you might go unnoticed for a little while, but if you start getting greedy and taking rice from someone's bowl, well, maybe now they see the ant, um, and they. Mm -hmm. start and the more you take, the more annoying you would get, right? And the mm. oblivion just, you're an ant, you know? You're not winning the fight. So you the way you're wish. describing it, oblivion is not just a place, it's, it's also alive and conscious. With its own no will. No good has ever come of people trying to... Grasp, Instead of... grasp Oblivion, mm -hmm. begun it, draw power from it. The people who have usually met grisly ends. Um... How long haven't you seen that symbol? Oh um, my. Roughly. That would be better part of a millennia. Uh, maybe 600 years or so. It's been a long time. Were you in Drusia when you first saw it? No, no. Drusia wasn't a thing back then. Yeah, Drusia's been a thing for the better part of 300 years. Hmm. Give or take. So it's ancient. No. Hmm. Well, I mean, the, the city states. Um, 
they've been around for about 300 years. I think Drusha itself was established a little bit, almost nearly a century ago now. Like as a mm. big named thing to keep the fighting from Eldathorn and Armskirk and Fellhold and all them from sort of bashing heads with each other over and over again. Do you remember where you were when you first learned about Oblivion? Um... It was before I went into the jungle. Mm. No. So there's a lot of things in my head. Uh, it's sometimes hard to pull up memories on the fly like that. Um, I might have it written down somewhere. I can check. But... We appreciate it, but I, I understand. Someone with so many memories as yours, I imagine it's hard to keep them straight. Things sometimes. sort of get fuzzy after a few hundred years. <laughs> yeah, anyone wearing that symbol's bad business in the first place. Anyway, I wouldn't want them yeah. in my aircraft. They, they're doing something to our to our town, and we don't like it. And Good. so, no, no, nobody wearing that going through the hands. Yes, and um, at the very least, one of their members knew about the Bode Mall stones. I don't know if they knew about the gates. But they knew about the stones. Good to know, good to know. Well, um, the individual that was coming through, I can tell you, wasn't wearing anything like that. He was barely wearing, like, a shirt. Very, um, breezy. Like, busy mm. type of shirt. Um, you could see his neck and everything. Yeah, um... Looked like as... he should have been a, on a nice painting or something. Well, I, I think as yeah. long as you're you're willing to be gatekeeper and yeah, under that peaceful. conditions, yeah, yeah we to. can agree. Um, good, 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 good. Um, now I th what brings you by? It was it just to visit me? Did you have business? Well, we we just wanted to talk to you. We, you're you have the big greatest memory of anyone we know. So we already found out a lot of information from you. So thank you. But um, and I, I also yeah. yeah, we also brought you something, and I'll take out the hammerhead. Uh, I recently purchased this and I tried um, one of my trusted armor uh, smiths to uh, attach a handle to it but every um, wood he tried splintered and we couldn't figure out what's going on so maybe you could take a look at it and tell me what's so special about it so it floats out of your hand Not sure. Um, I mean, the way that I'd be able to sort of give it a checkout might destroy it also. So I don't want to destroy your fancy little rock, metal rock thing. Um, I mean, I can try, but you can't blame me if it gets destroyed. Your choice, what do you want? Dan scratches his head. What would you be attempting to try? Just I could try magically to deduce what it is? Well, it, so I can't really figure out what magical things are enough to soul to me. Um, but I can figure out if something is small enchantment or big enchantment. But if it's small enchantment, it turns to dust. Oh. Hmm. And then it's not really good anymore. If it's big enchantment, it survives. Technically. Dunnan, you might as well do it because if it's yeah. not a big enchantment, you're really not losing anything. Yeah, that's true. It's not worth anything then. No. Not worth anything. I'm already in spells. Go ahead. Try figuring it out if it's a big enchantment or not. Go outside, please. Um... He floats out towards the door with the little hammer. See if he grabs him. more food before he step outside. <laughs> As you're sitting there eating a piece of melon, uh, you see him sort of float it up in the sky above, and then one of the tendrils sort of turn and look at it for a moment. And you see a green beam of energy shriek, uh, shriek towards the hammerhead um, and impact it. Uh, a moment later, the beam stops. And the hammerhead floats back down. It's not dust, so it's a good enchantment. 
probably pretty mm. powerful. Not sure what it is, but very strong mm. at the very least. Oh, great. Well, at least it's not a piece of crap. I uh, still don't know what and how to use it. Hmm. I'd say, well. Dunnan, though, um, the individual that's been speaking with the Earl is, seems to be very well versed in magic, magic items. Perhaps they might know. Mm, probably they might, yeah. I mean, uh, we talked to Elthip and he didn't know, so <laughs> I don't know anyone else. Yeah, true. Well, it's worth the try. Worth a try. Kelpip, I know that name. Um, wait, is he, he this, it, 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 is he, um, is his name Snowbido? Snowbido, I saw his name on the manifest. Yes. yes. Um, he, he's the one who made the knives. Oh, yes, yes. I mean, he, he, he didn't make them for me. I think they, um, they were bought, they got, the guy that I got them from got them from him originally. They were in the manifest box. That's interesting then. Then our mystery man has run into Kelpip or his wares at some point. But Kelp, I think he would be interested to know that, but yeah, Kelpip is a very fine craftsman. Yeah, they work today. Um, yeah, if um if trade picks up from Elderthorn, he is one of the merchants you may be in contact with. It'd be great. I'd love to meet him. Tell him to stop by. I I will. I I think he he'd definitely be interested. He's just he's been helping us us um, safeguard the waters of Elderthorn recently, so he's been quite busy. Nah, understood. Understood. Um, uh, anything else I can? Um, the, I have plenty of space in the caravansary. We have a uh, little private areas for you to sleep and rest. Lots of cushions. Um, very comfortable. In the morning we have uh, sweet mint tea uh, to help brace you for the day. Um, hope you enjoy. Um, yeah, I think I we're get... we're going to spend the night, and then I assume now that permission's been given, we're okay to go through the gate. No, I, I, I you can't go through. No, it. it's the other way. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so we I, can I, tell I... them if we these people can go. Okay. We can tell them if they can come to us, but we can't. I, I need to speak yeah. with them first. Oh, to they, have the deal. first okay. they have to agree to the same conditions as we oh, okay. just said. Yeah. That, that, that's fine. Um, we'll wait for the response, and then I'll reveal an, a stone. Um, we found another stone. Um, you have another right? one. That's amazing. Well, if you place it, I will consider the group of you to be the one's permission for this also. I, I think we will, but um, we're no just deal, a little worried. No deal on the new one until you determine where it goes. Yes, that's the uh, yeah. Um, so I, I turn to the group done and then you need to put uh, signs on these hands. Yeah, I, I say um, we, we can potentially go through another gate, but there wouldn't be a guaranteed way back. Or no, we live we for, we strive for the adventure, don't we? Sounds we like do. An adventure. Would you like to take some food with? I'll have. I should like come up with a name for the knives. I will mm. think of this. Yeah. Kelly's gonna go. Where where do we Maybe leave the horses? Chef. I think the the horses are still with Madame Totu's side, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The, the horses don't like going through the gate. No, I wouldn't think yeah. so. No, um, okay, so Heli is going to reach into her bag that she brought with her and uh, bring out the uh, doom box of spiders. The gift that she got <laughs> for uh, Yarol. And, you know, hey, Yarol, when I saw this, I thought of you. I thought it might be good for the fungin. What is it? What's it do? It brings spiders. I love it. I want it. You said it's for me? I accept. It's for you. It's a gift for all you've Thank done. Thank you so much. You see the, the button You're just welcome. gets pushed by the uh, teleconnect ability. Open. Oh, um, this is spider. I love it. It's great. So I, I think the spider the plan falls is... to the ground and scurries away. He pushes so it I think again. the plan is um, spider. rest for the night. 
eat breakfast and then try out a new gate? Correct. I think that is the way to go. Well, please enjoy. Um, there's a little bit more fruit. I need to go check on uh, the ice hatches as well, though. Um, so you're just eating a mango like an apple right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who would? You will enjoy. I have some business. I'm going to make some signs too. Um, I'll put like a no permission sign on the, whichever one you you pick next. Okay. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, thank you for working with all this politics. It's. I, it's... I, I wish we could just openly travel, but there are it, dangerous people up there. It's fun. No worry. I like it. I want more people to come, they can stay. Um, if people want to move here, they're more than welcome to. I have lots of space. And then I have people to talk to. I mean, uh, you, you might get some snowbirds when the winter comes. What's a snowbird? Uh, people who who only play, stay in areas where it's warm and tropical. Uh, so they, they they, won't they... I mean, it gets chilly overnight. Uh, but it doesn't snow I don't here, know right? That. It's true. I've not seen snow here. No. <laughs> I wonder if I can make snow. That'd be fun. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past you, Arrow. I mean, ice is easy. Snow. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, but, oh. All right. Um, One more question, Arrow. Um, yes. Where we come from, there is there's sort of spirits um we refer them as as kami um they mm -hmm. sort of represent kami, the different yeah. aspects of nature the, are there any around here have you contacted them before you don't i don't know about how to contact the kami but they're present everywhere okay in the in you the trees, the rocks the winds the water you haven't had any trouble with them in the past or no okay well, just thought I'd ask. Thank you, Hero. Of course. He gives you a big toothy grin. I'm going to go make signs. Uh, and he sort of floats off. <laughs> it was very insightful. Yeah. So, oblivion, huh? Mm, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, it does not sound no. good. Nope. From what he told us, no. But Can't I mean, be good. If you gain power from it, there's always going to be someone reaching for it. It's just how it goes. Oh, power, land power always comes with a price. So. Well, Yerl made it seem like that Oblivion may have not known that these people were getting power from it, but. It seems sure as heck now that Oblivion is looking back, I guess. I mean, it feels that way. Yeah. Well, I'm at the very least, done, and that hammer seems amazing. Yeah, but it's useless without a handle. I mean, I can throw it, but that's all I can do. Hmm. So, what was the I problem have... with the handle? The handle just kept breaking, or the, it just didn't work? This, the wood splintered, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like it's, uh, I don't know, refusing the handles. I, I don't know how to exactly explain it. Just, just did they try different wood types, like oak and Birch and it all splintered. Perhaps we just need to find a better material. Probably, yes. Or maybe it only has its own handle and we have to find his handle. Is that true? Could be, yeah. Well, I have the pressure sure for now, so I'll keep it around. Maybe we'll come across the handle on our travels. So, which change are we choosing for tomorrow? We have got quite the choice. 
I was just going to pick the, the first one to the left from the Elderthorn one, but if anyone had any other ideas. No, it's... no. I think anyone is good. Well, my thought is maybe we should wait to get permission from the other one because, it, well, they do have both ways to get in and out. Never mind. Yeah. And um, I, I feel like as long as they respect the Earl's authority, we, we they seem to want to trade. So, yeah. And if, if Storm Surge knows about it, then they can assume what we we what we did. So, yeah. I think we should be okay. I, I wouldn't mess with the Earl, so hopefully these merchants won't either. Well, it is a uh, travel to Mason to to this. Yeah, it's evening. Um, you rest to recuperate, um, and that brings us to the twenty-first uh, day of Kythorn and the beginning of summer. The last ten day of Kythorn. As you wake the next morning, fully refreshed, your exhaustion gone, um, ready to place a bode stone. You said first oh, to I, the left of the. I island. leave the decision up to you, uh, Siegfried. Yeah. Um, I think. Siegfried will just. Uh... Oh, what did you say, Holly? I was just going to say I agree. We should go um, clockwise. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, let me grab a little freehand thing. So they're, they're set up in this sort of pattern. Um, the This one is the Elderthorn one, the X. And this one has been the one that the other one that's activated. Uh, that apparently goes to the Stormstring Isles. So you're activating this one? Yeah. Correct? Yes. All right, wonderful. And we find ourselves in oblivion. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope this right. one goes to oblivion. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> you die campaign over. Uh, it says right here on the sign, oblivion. You didn't see it? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, there are the signs for uh, the two hinges that have been activated so far. Um, that Yarl has made over the course of the day, in the same sort of flowing script that the Moon Sands Caravan City's sign is painted in. Um, and he sort of just affixed them on the ground, not onto the henge, but like right in front of it. Um, uh, such to label them appropriately. Uh, you select the one that you have, and uh, with your compatriots, place the Bodemol stone within the alcove at the top of it. There's the instant sort of searing and flash of light as it sort of locks itself into place magically. And like a, the starting of a waterfall, just a curtain of uh, this undulating flowing energy um, descends from the apex of the henge and fills the vacant um, uh, arch with this semi-opaque, looks like it's just a tunnel into fog in front of you and you recognize the familiar activation of this henge for the very first time are there uh, is the color different uh, at the hinges like you no know, are they all blue the gates i mean no that are not that they open no, the, the, all of the colors of the uh, veils are Wheels. They're they're they they shift. The, it's not a single color. They shift. Um, okay. Uh, slightly, like they're throughout the different range of very pastelish colors. Colors, pardon me, but um, it's not a cl very clear delineation. It's like multicolored wafts of fog. It's just obfuscate. It's very strange to look at because it looks like when you're looking into the henge. That it's this foggy tunnel that just extends about 15 feet through the henge but then like 
if you take one step mm -hmm. to the side, you can see that there's no tunnel behind the hinge. And you know that's sort of that mm -hmm. connection between the two places. Okay. All right. Everyone ready? Yep. Sure. Well, hopefully find a stone on the other side. Otherwise, this is a one-way trip. Mm -hmm. And see if it steps through. One by one, yeah. you feel the... We can handle everything. <laughs> one by one, you feel the cool... <clears throat> the cool sensation of the magic of the henge overtake your forms. The shiver runs down your spines as it envelops and sort of clings to you, almost reaching out as you get close to sort of inculcate you into the bubble of its own energy. As you look back and the the light of Urkrip fades behind you, um, and you start to walk the few steps that you take forward, suddenly feel like they're going downhill as you tumble forwards. Um, all of you add a level of exhaustion once again. Um, mm. As you step out of the henge, you're almost like sort of trying to catch yourself, like you're walking down a hill too quickly. Um, and you stumble into two individuals on the far side, um, knocking yourselves and them down. Um, those of you who went through the Henge second sort of trip over the bodies that are now sprawling in the ground on the far side. Um, and it takes a long moment for you to actually gather your bearings as you sort of ext extricate yourself from this uh, impromptu puddle of people. Um, the bright desert light has been replaced by a vibrant emerald hue that persists throughout the space. The smell of damp earth and rain invades your nostrils, and sounds of buzzing insects fill the air with a tremendous symphony that seems cacophonous from the relative silence that Urquipt uh, commands. Everything around you is lush and green, or tinged with woody and earthy colors that you would expect of growing things. You've taken a few steps into a lush and primeval jungle. The first few steps have also been nearly on top of what you now see are two furbolgs, each just shy of seven feet in height. I uh, immediately male, go into a defensive position. Uh, uh. The male um, looks over you with his bright green eyes, uh, reminiscent of the lush canopy around you. Uh, while well, the female's attention is more focused on recollecting the plants that you dropped from, that she had dropped in surprise at your sudden appearance and knocking her over. Uh, he's burly and strong, where she's supple and lithe. Both have well-defined muscles, though, and very little body fat. Yeah. Their clothes, respectively, leave a lot to be desired and little which needs to be imagined. <laughs> Both of them are barefoot, wearing little more than uh, loin cloths and garments made from some unknown fabric that seems threat of air. The hair upon each of them is tied back tightly, and uh, some of it has been uh, sort of made into locks to keep it away from their faces as they work. The male reaches down um, and slowly picks up a gnarled and heavy looking quarterstaff before asking in the orcish tongue, Who are you? I just nudge Heli forward. <laughs> <laughs> we are travelers. Where are we? You are... Travelers. How mm -hmm. did you... get here? You were not here, and then you were here. I'm going to translate to Siegfried and Dunnan what he just said. I just um, tell them that this archway here is a gate. We activated it on our side and came through. As you gesture up and look around, you see the hinge that you're currently, you've currently stepped out of is set onto a very small hill um and has twisted vines and plants growing all around it uh even in in between where the veil would extend if it were present 
there's large bushes that you realize might have been the things that had tripped you up on your stepping throat. Um, it is overgrown. And um, I just tell Heli to, to translate as well. Like, we don't mean any harm. We didn't know there would be people on the other side. We didn't mean to disrupt your your um, gathering. I apologize. Can you translate all of this, Heli asked? Yes. I translate all of that. <laughs> right, so you see his eyes sort of move from Siegfried to you, Heli asked. Back to Siegfried. This individual speaks for you, but does not speak the mother tongue. Why do you allow him to speak for you? He gives me great advice. He gives I... me a, a, another opinion, because where I come from, he and I are equal. And then I think the, the, Aeolus... the female herbal sort of smiles. Ah, he is your mate, I understand. I will just go ahead and accept that. But <laughs> Aeolus is with us, yes. even though he's not talking. So he would also, I think he would also answer in some sort of orcish. Yeah. Um, and, um... and we've we've heard of for for like furbolgs aren't like a mystery to us right no they're just we, we, not common you've never you've and, never uh, seen one you've heard of them but you've not seen one. but um from what siegfried's heard of they usually speak giant right um, or is that is that not, not something sure. yeah okay you, you you have no i mean reason would dictate that they would speak the same common tongue as everyone else okay um, I was just asking if, if Siegfried knew um, they were descended from giants or not like him, but no. I don't think he knows that much about her Yeah. So yeah, I would just wait and see what Ellie says. Okay. What am I supposed to report back? I'm sorry, that took a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Why no, I... have you... You went through... Activate... The stone arch, the stone arch is, it's not a door, it's an arch, it's no door. You could... I know, it's confusing. We have to find the key to the door Uh, while we are here, there is another key on this side. And then we are hoping we can facilitate communication between our side and your side. And we are also trying to solve the mystery of someone who is poisoning our wells. They sort of seem lost in thought for a moment, uh, and the female answers here. What is it that you call yourselves? What are your names? I am Hellerast. The large one here is Siegfried. The short one here is Dunnan. The old one is Aeolus. <laughs> and Aeolus the pipsqueak is... Like is... <laughs> I know, but he's got a little bit of gray hair. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the older one is, is Aeolus, or the grumpy one. The grouchy one is Aeolus, and the pipsqueak is Willem. Uh, I am Kira, and this is Omeron. Uh, here are the handouts. I've used the artwork for Umeran before. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll recognize that one now. Yeah. No relation to Cannon <laughs> <laughs> Um So uh, are they friendly, uh Haley, or They're cautious, uh -huh. but not attacking yet. Alright. 
Uh, ask him I'm where we are. He's, um, Dunham, what's your passive perception? You have the highest in the group. Oh boy. I think like 15 or 16. Okay. Uh, my one's 17. 17. Okay. 16. So, uh, Siegfried and Dunham. Uh, 16 is a check. Um, the two of you see... Kelly has zero. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the two of you see, um, stalking between the trees, a, a big form, um, looks to be some mat, like massive cat-like creature, much larger than a regular cat, that's just sort of stalking between the trees, like sort of paying attention to the group of you. Um... Heli, can you um, ask your host uh, if we should be worried about that giant cat out there? Yeah, is uh, that creature to her. Yeah. belong to you? Uh, Umar is that creature belong to you? Not attack you unless I tell her to. You're fine for now. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's him in the background. Wow. <laughs> there we go. I guess through Heli, I asked um, so what now? Um, it will still translate whatever you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I'll just say, um, so how should we proceed? Um, you... Are we to be escorted by you or taken captive? Or You see the two of them sort of look at each other for a moment and whisper back and forth for a few seconds. You will not be captives for now. Um, you said you want to trade. What? Not us specifically, but the place this gate leads to is a is a intersection of gates. Um, the mayor who runs that intersection would like more people to be a part of it. Don't know what the mayor is. Um... Uh, he's a tribal leader. He he he's the leader of the town that we that is the intersection. Oh, okay. Um, uh, the female, uh, uh, Kira, sort of sniffs the air. You all stink. Secret spells. I mean, I guess we've been traveling for quite a bit. At the very least, you can bathe. Um. Yeah, Caddy. She sort of holds out this sort of gathering basket to you, Siegfried. Um, yeah, I, I carry it. About a good five pounds of different plants on there, as and it's quite large. Uh, she stands. A few inches taller than even you. Uh, follow us. Um, Just for my information, the whale behind us is not open now, right? No. No, we need a okay. stone to reopen it. Okay. Mm. Yes. So, w whatever are we doing? We are following them so we can take a bath. That sounds easy enough. About an hour passes as you follow them through twisting and turning paths in the jungle, some nary more than two feet in width. Um, it's impressive how these two individuals move through the space in ways that uh, are difficult for uh, some of you who are more narrow than they are. Um, presently, as you push through the dense undergrowth of the jungle, you stumble upon a sight both feeling mystical and mysterious. A partially concealed ruined temple, half hidden by encroaching foliage in the small clearing. The temple's ancient stone walls are adorned with moss and vine. They stand weathered and worn, revealing the passage of countless ages. The entrance is framed by intricately carved arches depicting creatures of the jungle and other entities that you suspect might be 
illustrations of Kami. As you approach, you notice the faded hieroglyphics etched into the stone surface. The meaning is too difficult to discern, maybe some cryptic puzzle, and you feel beckoned to lose yourself in the search. As you enter, the interior of the temple reveals a captivating scene. A harmonious blend of nature and the remnants of some past civilization that er erected this structure. The main chamber is overgrown with sprawling roots and tangled foliage, seamless, seamlessly merging the jungle with the sacred space. Sunlight filters through a, a cracks in the canopy and cast ethereal patterns upon the stone floor that illuminate, illuminate the intricate artwork adorning the walls. Tucked away in an alcove, you spot a cozy living space crafted by uh, presumably the Firbolgs that call this place home. The room boasts a large and hand-carved bed from sturdy jungle timbers, adorned with woven vines and innumerable soft pelts. Nearby, there is a simple a series of simple yet functional furniture, also fashioned from the materials of the land around you, uh, you suspect. Stands neatly arranged, a table, two small stools, and shelves for storing their belongings. In another alcove, you can see slowly bubbling a small pool of crystal clear water. The Furbolg's resourcefulness is evident in the cleverly designed food storage area. Um, hanging from the top of their alcove, crafted from woven vines and barks, you see wooden jars um, that have unknown contents and uh, baskets full of nuts that are hung. Roots and tubers are draped uh, upon any spot that they can to dry. As you take in this temple's ambience, you feel a found sense of connection to nature, a bond that these Firbolgs have nurtured with their environment. There's a peaceful harmony that emanates from the temple and serves as a testament to their reverence for the jungle and for the kami. As you enter this space and take all of this in, uh, Akira sort of gestures at the pool. Bev, you all reek. And scare yep. away him. Siegfried doesn't hesitate. He strips and he starts painting. Mm hmm. Well, telling. The water is cool and refreshing. There is an upcurrent um, from somewhere down below. You suspect it's, this is some part of a natural spring that must then dissipate uh, somewhere underneath the rocks around the area. Such as, so the pool does not overflow. Or get contaminated by our stink. Also fair. <laughs> You also bathe then? I'll strip down while it, take, it takes a while for me to don off my armor. Yes, that's true. One by one. But yes, that will happen and Ellie will no longer stink. You're treated to a fairly uncomfortable bath. Well, the water is pleasant and feels good to remove some of the grime of your travel. Not too much has been accumulated since you last visited the establishment where it was all purged from you. But that's not quite the same as getting wet and washed. Um, the two Firbolgs have sort of seated themselves in their air and are just watching the group of you bathe, waiting for you to finish. We are paving. Why don't they keep watching? Can it's I weird. Do an insight check on them? Sure. Make an insight check with disadvantage because you don't speak their language. Yeah. Don't, yep, I don't speak. Also, we're we're exhausted, so. Also that, yeah. Lots of disadvantage. Extra disadvantage. Yeah. Um, they're Double hard to triple. read. Um, 
they haven't been openly hostile towards you other than like what you can get sort of body language wise as cautiousness at your sudden and unexpected arrival um in a space that there should have been no unexpected arrivals um something about them seems familiar and something about them seems alien to you it's mm. it's just tough to put a put a finger on Siegfried just he continues to bathe yeah um S Siegfried and Dunnan as you're finishing up your bath um you see uh prowling from uh around one of the alcoves uh the large jungle cat looks to be a panther um semi corporeal you can see through it but everything through it is fuzzy this seems like it might have been the thing that you saw between the trees previously just sort of stalks past the bath looks at you flicks its tail in annoyance and then stalks over towards the fur bulgs uh umuran uh gives it a few scratches and then you see its form dissipate so she's like you Halley. umuran's the man oh i'm sorry or, sorry i'm allowed to say he he's like you Halley. i think that cat was like corn, right? I think so. I should uh, pull corn and see what she says. So, corn will start crawling out from between my boobs. Uh, at the appearance of corn, who's not quite as large as the cat, um, no. uh, the two fur bulk sort of glance and then whisper to each other and then turn back and they have softer expressions on their face but they don't make any mention to you about five minutes later the group of you have finished bathing and are have been able to at the very least put on your base layers i um, not quite don all of your armor as of yet but enough that you're comfortable and no longer exposed to the almost unblinking gaze of these two folks that have watched the entire show you put on at this point. You... Uh, as you approach Umaran, you conjure the Kami yourself. It is nice to see that the art has not been lost. Hmm. Although she is Thank small, you. She's very fierce. And quite powerful. Nancy's good. Um, forgive us for our caution. Um, it is unlikely that we get visitors that are skilled with the tongue. Um, no offense taken we would do the same thing if you came onto our side you're only trying to protect your people well the, our people is us um, just the two of you there are no others hmm. well other than our companions that keep us company but it is just us, since trails off. Mm. What brings you all here? You said for trade, but you needed to find a key? Well, yes. Mostly uh, to be able to see what was here. We are also looking for answers to why our wells are being poisoned. 
Not that you would know, but we just are seeing if we can find anything that would give us a clue as to why. I do not know how to assist you with that. Um, you are more than welcome to look around our made home. For Thank you. Clues, if you would like, but not of any poisoning of wells. The female sniffs the air again. You still stink. It's being rude. Is it something we carry? Well, it might be. Purses or lips and sort of scowls. And she speaks with um, uh, Uran for a moment. What are they talking about? Still stinking? I've never been this clean. <laughs> Pay her I even... mind um, <laughs> at the moment. Uh, she'll, she continues, though. Yes, please, look around. Don't smell up our bedroom. As long as we have your permission, we will be nearby. They both sort of nod and they watch as you walk, look around the area. I kind of get mixed signals from them. I don't know if we are welcome here or not. It's... I mean, if they've been living by themselves all this time. I, I think welcome is a strange word for them. But they accept that we are here. Maybe we should ask them if they need some help with something. I mean, we are good at mm -hmm. dealing with problems and maybe that will gain their trust. See if we can return the hospitality. Correct. So yeah, I, and I'll, I look around, is that creature still... Um... Watching us? The panther? No, it's gone. Yeah. Ah, uh, uh, no, it's returned back. Okay. Yeah, um, before I, I left their presence, I would just ask, um, is there anything we could aid you with? I know that's a presumptuous question, but... I'm, I'm a healer if you need that. Um, they look confused at the question. Like, uh... Like, why would... They, they... Give me an inside check. So, what did you just ask my uh, Discord sure. just cut out for a second? I just asked if they needed help with anything. Ah, uh, okay. They were confused at the offer, um, in the first okay. place. Because, uh, well, Aeolus translates it, so... They look at Aeolus confused as, like, why that offer is being made in the first place. I just tell him to say it's it's the offer we make to most people we meet. You get waved off. Okay. All right, I'll just go to look around the the temple then. Um, I want all three of you to roll me investigation or perception checks, your choice, as you're sort of looking around the temple. I'm going to, um... You all have disadvantage. You all use damage. Yeah. Oh, I'm no. going to enhance ability myself. Well, so you have a straight for, for perception, and then I'm also going to go into dragon form. Okay. Base 10. Yep. And I'm going to do perception. I rolled a 21. I'm, I'm also going to pop a detect magic as I'm walking around. In case that matters. Okay. And here's the perception. You can't. So You're having... Enhance abilities are also... Oh, yeah. Huh? Sorry. Yep, no detect magic. I'll leave okay. the enhance ability. Alright, so 17. Um, 17, 21, and 5. Hello, guys. There are some stunningly beautiful carvings, but 
your mind is more preoccupied with that panther. Like you're you're looking at things, but you're not really seeing them as you go. Um, uh, Dunnan, as you are exploring the space, you find uh, a series of paintings and carvings on one of the interior walls that has some light shining on nearby to the point that it can be made out relatively easily. Um, and it has pictures of small amorphous creatures um, that are just watching, sort of standing on roots and rocks and tree branches, uh, popping their heads out of uh, different plants and stems that are carrying um, twigs and berries and branches here and there. Um, like little humanoid ants, featureless. Um, no, not even eyes carved onto their forearms. Um, that just are in a procession leading around the space. Um, you get the feeling that these are depictions of the kami of this jungle that are mm. present and you've not seen people depict these things previously the the activities are seen but the things causing said activities have never been depicted but you see them sort of shifting things and planting little saplings and doing all manner of different things as you go and we're following along this long wall. Um, Siegfried, uh, you started at the other end and you found half covered in moss. You had to sort of scrape away a little bit. Um, the carving of a dome, sort of an arch. Um, and as you work back, you find a section of wall where these little gray, uh, gray, like dark, dark gray, maybe dark blue things, these carvings of these amorphous people that Dunnan started at the other end of the wall and just sort of started on, um, pick up half, about halfway through. Um, where they're sort of climbing this arch and frying something from it. The next sort of section has the arch no longer drawn with such detail and trees being planted in and around it. And then larger and larger until the final sort of pain of this series of illustrations and hieroglyphics is nothing but jungle and at the base of the jungle is a series of these little humanoids not none taller than a, a fern just standing with their little little arms linked together at the base of this jungle. You're startled by Umuran. That was in the common tongue. That was the beginning of the fall. Uh, according to our Mother and father, and it is when the end began. I I, uh, I, I point to one of the the tall bluish figures, uh, bluish guy. Who, who are they? Not, looks they're not like... tall. They're small. Um, oh, small. Are they the kami? That's yes. 
um, uh, the essence of it sort of gestures around essence. Everything. Yes. So they were the ones who took the stone from the archway? Uh, he steps a few panels back and sort of taps the dick. And he makes a motion with his hand, like a grabbing motion. Mm. Hide. Did they not like Protect. the gate being open? He comes back to um, the one that you're standing at at the end and sort of scrapes at the bottom of the the jungle and this line of them holding their arms and linking together sort of scrapes some moss and pulls a vine out of the way and you can see the the bottom underneath that sort of line of them has been sort of stained dark by all of the, like the the dirt and the silt that the vine sort of crept through and pushed along with it um uh and there's sort of jagged marks sort of carved into the space, occupying, like cross-hatching throughout the whole bottom of that panel underneath the line of what you've dubbed as the kami. They take, protect. Is there a way we can, you can help us speak to the kami? Perhaps petition our case. Switches so to Orcish. Hellares, you hear this call get called out throughout the temple. They wish to make a trial to prove. I think. Can you check with that one? Um. Uh, the female Kira comes up to you, Hellares. Um, start speaking. I think your companion is asking to prove his worthiness, I believe. What is he saying? Okay. Sorry, my husband was talking to me. What was that again? I'm lost. <laughs> your companion uh, is wishing to prove his worthiness, I believe. Yes. Uh, sure. Yes. Can we speak to the Kami? Is there any way we can speak to them? Don't speak to them. Um, there's no answer. Hmm. Sikri, do yeah. you sometimes get answers from the Kami? The answers, but they make themselves known. Okay. But they're the ones, I believe, who are protecting the stone right now. I, I don't want to antagonize them. No, not at all. If they need us to prove ourselves, that's what we must do, I think. Uh, is, mm -hmm. it, is they all just translating everything that you're saying, Siegfried? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, partway through, um, Umaran stops Aeolus. No, no, no. Um, not protect. Uh, to, well, through Aeolus. They don't protect the... the thing they take they protect he gestures around the room again they protect everything from what they take mm. so they believe the stone is the da a danger well either way I would like an audience with them if if I have to prove myself, then I accept. Uh, as he always translates, um, Umaran just sort of rubs his temple. There is no... them, audience, represent... There is no one who speaks for others. Um... The world does not work in these ways. The... Well, 
apologies. I I don't have much knowledge about the kami besides what my mother told me, and she just told me to treat them with, with respect. You seek... You sort of... He's trying in the common tongue again. He's not very good at it, you can tell. Mm -hmm. uh, he sort of taps the, the stone again. You, this key? This was key? Yes. We used one on the other side. But we need one more to go home. So he's back to Orcish. Uh, so the real is, he's... So you seek the key to... put in Arch. Not just to put in the Arch, but also... To find answers about the nature of the key itself, if we can. What if the key is dangerous? The usage of the key? I know for sure that it is dangerous. I already know it is dangerous. We already know it's dangerous. However, uh, the way the stone is used, it will not leave your side of the arch. It will still be here. We are not taking it away. And part of the reason we seek this, even though it's dangerous, it's connected to the poisonings going on in our town. And if we don't find the answers, I'm afraid there's nothing we'll be able to do to prevent its destruction. My family lives there. My friends live there. If I have to face danger to help them, then that's what I'll do. He stays in Orkish tongue. His common is clearly difficult, and he's worried that he's misunderstanding yeah. or misspeaking. Um... The key. Do not know where it is. Um, if you wish to have it returned, you would need to earn not our trust, but he touches the wall. Bears. How how would we do that? Where where we come from to earn the Kami's trust is to leave them alone. He sort of gestures at all of the space. Show that you can coexist. Okay. Here, uh, let us eat and we will have answers. Uh, Kira nods and goes and fetches um, uh, a, a bowl uh, it has a number of different ingredients and in it. it looks like um, some broken down root vegetables uh, a few sort of mushroom caps some uh, like long grasses that have sort of been torn and twisted to get some juice to release uh, yeah. um, and she hands uh, the bowl a bowl to each of you um thank you i i ask um in orcish and in common um do you enjoy ale at all do you, uh in orcish through aeolus yeah um, what is ale um it's a drink we produce where we come from it has alcohol in it but it also tastes pretty nice We have some if you'd like to try. Okay. Understood. They fill up some what looks like a gourds from the 
the bath water <laughs> um and that they have that um you will sit down have a at this point in the day lunch um of mushroom caps tuber vegetables uh, tubers root vegetables uh some grasses it's a a bit chewy and kind of bland um after, especially after being used to Willem's delightful cooking. Um, I'm sure he has choice words about the flavors and whatnot. Uh, as you finish eating, um, uh, Umeran is smiling. Right, now we have answers. One by one, the group of your you, your heads swim, and your vision blurs before it fades to black. Um, we'll pick up their next session as the group of you all pass out. <laughs> oh, lovely. Yeah, it's I'm, great. I'm, I'm glad there's...